Assalamualaikum. I know it's late. I know it's been a long day of listening to lectures, of spending time in the bazaar, but I think as a collective room full of amazing sisters, we can do better than that. Assalamu alaikum. Much better. I love to hear the beautiful voices of my sister in a gathering like this. I love to hear that return of the salam that we need from one another consistently because this sister sisterhood, this connection that we have with one another is what helps us get through day by day. It's what helps us get through with the ups and the downs and the craziness of life. The topic of this session is about the quest for success. When we think of the word success, when we think of what it means to be a successful person, how do we define that? What is success? Do we measure success in terms of wealth, do we measure success in terms of how many followers we have on Facebook? Do we measure success in terms of the size of our house? In terms of the way our children are growing? How many after school activities they're in? Their GPA? How do we measure success? Just a few minutes before, an hour or so before, we heard the Adhan for Salat al Maghrib. And we heard the Mu'addin call, Hayya ala salah, Hayya ala al-falah. Hasten to prayer, come to prayer. Hasten to success, come to success. Our success in this dunya and in this akhira is linked to our prayer. Our success is linked to our connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's where our success lies. But we are raised in a world that tries to tell us differently. We're raised as women from a very young age where we are told that to be successful, we need to complete our education. We need to get that bachelor's. We need to get that master's. We need to get that PhD or that MD. To be successful, we need to marry well. We need to marry that doctor. We need to marry that engineer. To be successful, we must raise boys who will carry on the name of the family, who will become doctors and engineers. And we must raise girls who will also marry well. We are told to be successful that we have to become superwomen. But that's not what the Quran tells us. That's not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of. In Surah Al Ahzab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us as He speaks to both men and women and says, indeed, the believing men and the believing women, the Muslim men and the Muslim women, the men who guard their chastity and the women who guard their chastity, the men who do good deeds and the women who do good deeds, for them there is great reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that man or woman, female or male, we will not be judged by our gender. But we will be judged by the merits of our deeds. We will be judged by our actions. We will be judged by what we do to please Him. Because the purpose of our creation, whether man or woman, is to worship the Creator. And we worship our Creator in the good that we do. We worship our Creator by pleasing Him. But what are these standards 
that we as women are often held up to? What are these standards that often feel impossible to obtain? We talk about society giving us definitions. We talk about society telling us what it means to be a woman. But sometimes we as women can also be our own worst enemies. We as women can look at one another and smile and sit next to each other and yet the next minute we find ourselves saying, did you see what she was wearing? Or yeah, she's doing well in work, but have you seen her house? Or have you tasted her biryani? Uh-uh. We as women are sometimes not kind to each other. We as women are sometimes our own worst enemies. But where does that come from? Where does that develop from? Because we know that is not the healthy heartbeat of an ummah. To keep our ummah healthy, we must keep our connections to one another healthy. To raise our children together to be the next generation that will lead, inshallah, and that will grow to be righteous. We must do it together, not by pointing fingers and saying, I don't want my child interacting with that one because that one's not good. Not by pointing fingers and saying, let's keep away from that family because that mother, she's divorced. Let's keep away from that family because that one has this and this and that going on. This is not the way that we raise an ummah. This is not the way that we link our hearts together and connect to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, there was an interesting saying by a woman named Gertrude Stein. Now, she's considered one of the foremost feminists of our time. And I don't agree with a lot that she says, but she did say something that was interesting. She said that in trying to become or in trying to find the perfect men, we as women have become those perfect men. What does that mean? That in struggling so hard to find our roles, to understand where we fit in, we have given up as women that which makes us who we are. We have struggled so hard to fit into societal definitions that have been created for what it means to be a woman today that we have lost what is most beautiful about us as women. That nurturing, that compassion, that connection to one another, that empathy, that caring. And we have shed that for what? To try to aspire to definitions that society has given us rather than to aspire to the definitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that whether we are male or female, it is the merit of our deeds that we will be judged upon. You know, it was once said that today we raise our women, our young girls, to be like boys. What does that mean? We push our girls and we tell them, be strong, be leaders, do this, do that, do that. But have we ever stopped and asked ourselves if we raise our boys to be like our girls? Do we ever stop and try to teach our boys the elements that often come inherently to our girls? the elements of empathy, of compassion, of nurturing, of connection with others. Until we do so, we will continue to struggle. Until we are able to teach to our boys those elements that we value in our girls, we will continue to struggle. Because today our girls are receiving bombardments of what it means to be a woman. It's very interesting to note that back in the 1950s, late 50s, early 60s, there was a book written by a woman named Betty Friedman. And the book is called The Feminine Mystique. And in this book, which was considered groundbreaking, Betty Friedman asks the central question. She asks, can a woman 
be successful outside of the home as well as inside of the home? Can a woman pursue a career and also raise children? Can a woman be someone that really transcends the definitions or the limitations of society? What does it mean to be a woman? What is the role of a woman? Now this book was considered groundbreaking because women everywhere read this book and felt, yes, I need to know my definition. I need to know who I am as a woman. I need to know what it means to be a successful woman. Now we fast forward a little bit to our present time. And interestingly enough, in 2013, another book came out. It was a book written by a woman named Sheryl Sandberg, who is the COO of Facebook. Sheryl Sandberg wrote this book in response to a situation that happened to her. She had been giving the commencement speech at Barnard College. And for those of you who are from the East Coast, you may be familiar with Barnard College, knowing that it's an all-woman's college or an all-woman's campus on the campus of Columbia University. And it's a college that prides itself on graduating women who are leaders, on graduating successful women. And in her commencement speech at the graduation of these young women at Barnard College, Sheryl Sandberg stood in front of the audience and she said to them, you may think the most important decision you will make when you graduate from here is what internship you'll land. You may think the most important decision you'll make when you graduate from here is what your first job is or what connections you've made with bosses and the top people in the industry. And she said, I stand here today to tell you that the most important decision you will make is who you marry. And when she said that, the audience of young Barnard graduates stood up in anger and they began to say, what are you talking about? What do you mean who we marry? We don't need to get married. We're independent women. We're successful women. And they were up in arms. And so Sheryl Sandberg wrote the book Lean In in response to that situation. And in that book, she asked the central question, what defines a woman? Can a woman be successful outside of the home as well as inside of the home? Can a woman be successful in her role as mother and as someone who pursues her career? And she wrote this book to speak about the importance of the family structure, of the partner that you choose. Today we are setting up an impossible task for our girls. Here at our center, Cornerstone, where we provide marriage facilitation, helping young people get married, we have a serious problem. And the problem is that we have highly educated young women, women who have pursued their degrees, who have excelled in their careers, who are ready to get married, and who cannot find anyone to marry. Where they... F I'm going to wait for the event to complete. You know, when we're at these conventions, sometimes we take for granted the fact that we're gathered together, we're sitting in a lecture, we're speaking with our friends, and we hear the adhan and we want to just continue on with our lives. But at the time of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would call out to his beloved Bilal, and he would say to Bilal, when he would ask him to call the adhan, he would say, Arihna biha ya Bilal. Bring us rest with the call to prayer, Bilal. We started by speaking about how our salah is the road to success. And it's something to hold on to, to integrate in everything that we do. So that as a reminder to myself first and foremost, but when we hear that adhan, not to take it for granted, but to realize that this is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a gift to us, our salah, to step outside of the insanity of our world, to understand where we, as women, get our definitions from. Because we don't need a definition 
from Sheryl Sandberg. We don't need a definition from Betty Friedan. We don't need a definition from Gertrude Stein for what it means to be a woman. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us that definition. What it means to be a successful woman is a woman whose heart is anchored in the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is a woman who recognizes that she will be tested but she will be tested in a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows she can bear. La yukallif Allahu nafsan illa wis'aha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never burden a soul with a burden that is greater than she can bear. And yet we look at childbirth. And many of the scientists who study childbirth will say it is amazing the amount of pain that a female body can withstand in those moments of childbirth, they transcend comprehension. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created women who are strong enough and resilient enough physically, emotionally, mentally to be able to bear that pain of childbirth and to continue to bear the trials and the tribulations of tarbiyah, but also to taste the sweetness of it. How do we raise our girls? How do we raise our young women, the next generation, who will lead and continue to lead the next generations to come and to come, who will be the Muslim Americans of the future? How do we raise them? How do we teach them what it means to be successful with a heart that is anchored in that love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We teach them. We teach them, we guide them, we show them by our actions. We've talked quite a bit about parenting and I know most of my sessions this, uh, this conference was about parenting. And we spoke at length about the importance of not possessing our children because we as women will sometimes find ourselves in a place where our love can suffocate where our love can move from the realm of a healthy love and into a love of possession, of control. And this is why, as a marriage counselor, one of the things that we see frequently in our center as well is problems related to the parents. Because when there is a love that is unhealthy, that suffocates, when we feel that our children are our possessions, we've lost sight of what it means to be successful as a mother because our love has shifted. And it is no longer a love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that our heart is anchored to. No, there is a man by the name of Greg Mortensen who used to climb mountains in Afghanistan and in Pakistan. And there came a time when he was climbing the mountains and he fell and got hurt. And so a family in Afghanistan took him in and they drank with him three cups of tea. And they said to him, now that we have drunk three cups of tea together, we are like family. And the man was so taken by this, he said, I promise that if I make it back to the US, I will start a foundation and I will raise money to build schools in your country. So true to his word, Greg Mortensen came back to the US and he started a foundation known as Pennies for Peace. And he began to raise money to build schools. And he went back to Afghanistan and Pakistan and he did build these schools that he had promised. But the schools that he built were for girls, only for girls. And so some of the media and the journalists were interviewing him and they were asking him, why are you only building schools for girls? And he responded and said, if I educate a boy, I have educated an individual. If I educate a girl, I have educated a generation. Because the education of our girls is key. But when we talk about education, we are not just talking about getting that bachelor's, that master's, that PhD or that MD. We are talking about the education of life. What does our daughter's character look like? What does our daughter's akhlaq, their adab, 
What is the state of their heart? How is their salah? How is our salah? If we find ourselves skipping our salah because we have to run to soccer practice, we have to go to Kuman, we have to drop our children off at Mathnasium or here and here and here, then we cannot say that this is success. Because when we lose that block, when we lose that foundation, then we lose what our success must be built upon. So guiding our girls through education, teaching them by action, bringing them back to the deen. But it starts with us. It starts with us as mothers, as aunts, as sisters, as friends, as neighbors. It starts with us reaching out to each other, connecting with one another, recognizing that our definition does not come from a book written by a feminist. Our definition does not come from the media. Our definition does not come from Beyonce or from Katy Perry. Our definition comes from a much higher power. Our definition, our worth, who we are as women, our success comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides us all to the successful path, to the righteous path. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides our daughters to that path as well and makes us of the most righteous that will enter into his Jannah. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum.